Hi guys, Roxana from the blog, acquaintlife.com. Today I have for you three recipes for an elegant, easy dinner party. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share a few dinner ideas that are both elegant and easy for those of you that like to throw dinner parties but also get very stressed out by them perhaps or maybe they're overwhelming so you don't host dinner parties. I recently in the past four to five years I've been working on this skill. Um, it's really important to me to entertain my friends and host uh, things. My very favorite thing to do is to really have an intimate dinner where I get to spoil my guests by making things beautiful and serving them an elegant dinner. Now an elegant dinner doesn't mean it's a difficult dinner or it's complicated and you're going to be in the kitchen all day. There's actually quite a bit of really beautiful ideas of serving something simple and delicious that everybody enjoys and feels very spoiled by and something that you don't have to give too much effort in. Today I want to talk to you about just a few. I have an option for vegetarian friends and an option for if you're trying to serve a meat dish. Uh, a simple meat dish, right? That's what this is all about. And I also have a dessert to finish it all up with that is very elegant and it's on the blog as well. Now these first two recipes aren't currently on the blog, but I'm gonna walk you through them so you won't really need to go and check there to find the recipe for this, although they might end up being there so you can later go back and, and research and grab it again. But, and nonetheless, let's get to it. The first one we're gonna be making is just a very simple creamy pasta dish. This one does not have any meat, and so it's good for vegetarians, not necessarily vegan because we are using yogurt. I have my bowl here. It's really easy. It's gonna be one cup of yogurt. I have a homemade yogurt that I'm making here, and I'm gonna put about a cup into the bowl. I have some chopped parsley here. We're gonna add a bit of chopped parsley to the yogurt, and I'm gonna save some of the chopped parsley. There's about a third of a cup here that's chopped and ready to go, and I'm gonna save just about, oh, couple tablespoons of the parsley to garnish the, the final dish. Then I'm going to put about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Normally I like to use regular lemons, but today I only have this, but this is a great one to keep on hand. About a teaspoon of salt. Use two large cloves of garlic that are roughly chopped. I don't do it too finely. It's okay if it's a little chunky. And the other thing that I want to add to this is some good olive oil. So you're gonna add about a cup of good olive oil to this. And I can eyeball it at this point because I make this pasta literally all the time. I'm gonna stir it up really well. And at first it might seem like it's not gonna go together because it's a cream and an oil, but it does. It goes together. You just kind of whip it up like I'm doing here. And we're gonna set it aside. And as you set it aside, that garlic's gonna start flavoring the yogurt and the olive oil and get better as it sits. I'm gonna be using spaghetti style pasta for this. I'm just gonna pour the mixture in and toss the pasta around. You can also use linguine or even angel hair pasta. Once it's ready, I'm gonna put it into a family serving style bowl and I'm gonna to top it with the rest of that parsley. You can also do individual plates if you'd like to plate it for your guest as well. That's also another great idea. But for this video, I'm just doing it in a family size bowl so that everyone can grab their portion from it. The next one I have for you is a salmon with mango salsa. I went ahead and made a mango salsa already by chopping up a mango, adding a bit of cilantro, one jalapeno, and some salt and some lime juice. You can omit the jalapeno if you do not like something spicy. Um, either way, it's good. And also a couple tablespoons of red onion. I don't want to forget that because it's a very important ingredient in mango salsa. So that's in the fridge, ready to go. You could do this prior to your dinner party and your guests arriving. For now, I'm going to prep the salmon. You can have your guests in the other room with their drinks, pop into the kitchen and do this last step for your salmon. I went ahead and heated one tablespoon of coconut oil into a cast iron skillet. And next I'm gonna take our salmon fillets and I'm just gonna open them up and make sure they're defrosted <laughs> if you have frozen. And I actually have a good quality salmon here that I get from a local store. And they have really good frozen salmon, believe it or not. Um, so if you have fresh or frozen, doesn't matter for this recipe and both work great. You're gonna go ahead and salt both sides of the salmon and pepper it, okay? And I'm 
just gonna get it over to our skillet, pop them in to the skillet, fry them for just a second, and then we're gonna pop it straight into the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Our salmon's all ready, and I'm just gonna lay it across a bit of spring mix. Then I'm gonna top it with that mango salsa I made earlier, and finally drizzle it with just a little bit of olive oil so that the salad has a little bit of a dressing on it. And as you can see, the presentation of this is, it's very beautiful and colorful and elegant. right here and they're I believe these are Bosque pears if I'm not mistaken and they have these really pretty stems on them if you can see and what we're gonna do is basically cook them in wine and they are a poached pear that you could serve alongside vanilla ice cream or whipped cream but they're actually very delicious just on their own so tonight I'm gonna leave them just on their own and you'll see how pretty they are and the presentation of them and your guests every time you make these will be absolutely wowed because well, whoever has a poached pear, right? And to do this, you're just going to peel it and get it into a sauce pot with a bit of red wine and a half a cup of honey. And we're gonna cook these on the stove top for about 20 minutes and you'll see them bright and red and beautiful. And we're gonna go ahead and keep the stems on. So just make sure that you do that because like I said, it's, it just makes the presentation better and it actually makes it a little easier to pull them right out <laughs> of the pan. So let's get to making our beautiful poached pears. We're gonna go ahead and peel the pears, leave the stem on if there is a stem, place them in a sauce pot. The full recipe is below like I mentioned before. And these are our pears after they are cooked for 20 minutes. And as you can see, they've soaked that wine and I'm gonna place them in a bowl. For presentation purposes, I like to remove the pear from the sauce pot and cut just a little bit of it off the bottom so that it sits flatly on the bowl and add a bit of the wine sauce to the bowl. You can add a scoop of vanilla ice cream or a bit of whipped cream to this, but as you can see, it's lovely on its own. Paired with a cup of coffee, it's the perfect elegant dinner party dessert. guys well thank you so much for watching i hope this video gives you some great recipes that you could serve for a great dinner party in your home and if anything i hope that it just inspires you to host a dinner party because it really is a lot of fun and it's such a great way to celebrate friends and share great times with them to bring people into your home and it might be an old-fashioned concept but i say that we should be bringing that back because the world is such a crazy place anymore that why not really focus on the home and being in it and being with people that we love. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and we will see you next time.